Welcome to episode number 283 of the Keep Up uh, podcast. <laughs> Where, let's go! I forgot about. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Okay, um, we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get to um, one of the things that we were talking. Let's, Let's go. go! Uh, what's up? Oh yeah. So hey, welcome to the Keep Up Podcast. Let's do it right now. Okay. Welcome to the Keep Up Podcast. Where I'm Brett and Tim is Tim. That's me. And we talk about all the things we consume, be it media or food, and we let you know if you should keep it on the list or not. Because there's a lot of stuff out there. You got to decide <laughs> which stuff is worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Totally. I forgot the Ugh. water upstairs. I'm oh, very you're gonna, sad. The whole, yeah, how are you going to make it through? I can't. What if we talked in that weird voice the whole time? <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, yeah, totally. Do you Bodacious. Think, should we do that for episode 300? Just fake like... Um, I Dude, I said accents. Radio announcer voices? No, do an accent the whole time. No. No, a radio voice, I think. Radio voice? No, you do radio voice. I will do my British slash Australian slash... Yeah, it just like slips in and out of a bunch of different disguises. It's just everything there, mate. It's just... I'm just talking as I would if I truly was an Aussie. Unforgettable. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay. Um... What's up? What's up? What's the thing? What's the thing? What was I going to say? What uh, was I going to say? I was going to say I, something. It's the podcast, Brett. It's the podcast. That's where we are. It's okay. in the game. EA Sports. Sports. Let's, Let's go! go! All right. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed there it. There it on. is. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. We just get the feeling. I can feel it in my bones. Like I got to feel it. Yes, I know. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's twin telepathy, but we're not twins. Yeah, telepathy. Yo, telepathy. That's weird. I feel like I had something for the intro, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Yeah, hey, listen, patrons, thank you very much. You guys are so cool. Doing something different this month. You are now going to get a video podcast as well as the audio only option. It's still at, the same podcast. At certain tiers. It's just huh? video. It's the same Cricket City. Yeah, Cricket bonus. City. We, it's a it's a Patreon exclusive podcast. Sorry, yeah. everyone's probably so confused. You know what I mean? No, not at all. They just, if you want to go you check Check it out. Yep. You just gotta go subscribe. If you want it, you can have it. <laughs> Your clap threw me off. That's a Weezer song. Do you know it? Um, Ooh. in the arms of an angel. <laughs> in the arms of. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Hey, shouts to new subscribers. Uh, happy to see you here. Yeah, we're famous now. I mean, we are. We actually were officially invited to Young Posse. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> to be in Young Posse. Yeah. They were like, you two got spunk, <laughs> and we're, we're both XXL. We're the. Well, that's at least the size I wear. That's true. I, yeah, I've been wearing a lot of 2Xs lately. Yeah. I mean, XXL, double XXL. Right. So they were like, you should yeah. be in Young Posse. They were like, hey, you have the lowest viewed reaction video of everyone who's <laughs> done one. <laughs> I think ours is up there. Hold what on. Are you be- <laughs> you I don't look have it to up. Check it. You Here we go. Check it. Young. Hold on. I'm I'm excited to be a part of K-pop culture. Uh, yeah. You know I think I mean? we are officially we're on the forefront. The fandom seems really cool. Yeah. You know we're what is gonna, this? We're <laughs> what's this? I'm doing the fandom. It's weird. We are going to be the next evolution of K-pop. We are. We are. <laughs> Youth of the nation. Not even that one? No, I know it. I just oh, didn't want right. to sing with just you. Just sitting that one out. Yeah, I just sometimes I gotta join in. But yeah. this time, Brett. Sometimes what? Young Posse Unforgettable. Reaction. Unforgettable. Oh, that's what dude, this whole time. Dude, there's I this random guy here and he has less than us. He's Sick. got one point six thousand. We're at one point seven. That's why we look are at he's a guy. This oh yeah, what's up, dude? He's just a guy. So I'm proud of him. That's I didn't know this was like a genre of videos people do. K-pop? Well, just like reaction to new Yeah, K-pop to music? like music. Dude, yeah, it happens in everything. Like the um the metal scene is huge for that. Like Dude, we come up. We come up hardcore. naturally scrolling through. We come up. That's pretty wild. We're in the Seeing algorithm. Us. We're there. They found us. They did. They're like, wait, what's uh, what's under all this stuff? <laughs> it's like, Who's, what's all? Who are these guys? What? Look at these. Look, there's two <laughs> two guys. This is us in a different reality. Oh my gosh, it is us. That's crazy. <laughs> there you go. There they are. I want to find all of these like duo podcasts yeah. and just do a podcast with all of them. Be like, no, hey. let's react to their reaction. Oh, that's a great idea. But we should do a super podcast too. Yeah. 
Like I saw one the other day and their description was just like two brothers, two different perspectives or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there can't be two podcasts with two brothers. That's no, out of control. That's first who of we all. are. Right. And they're not allowed to just steal us. We are, we are the youth of the nation. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you were way too late, so I just stopped. You didn't even say it. That's because you were late, dude. It would have been Man, bad. this is... Uh, people are probably so confused with what's going on here. This was a wild intro. Yeah. This is a lot going on. And um, if you're wondering about the let's go, got to be part of Patreon. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's the only answer I can give you Patreon for Patreon exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, actually, w- another thing we're going to change about Patreon is we're going to be adding some content there soon, of uh, like spoiler reviews, like full reviews of individual movies and things like that. Uh-huh. And that's going to be available to everyone from the $1 tier on. Anybody. Everybody. Everybody. Anybody and everybody. You could walk in there with a dollar. With a dollar. And get yeah. reviews. Reviews. Spoiler-filled reviews. Yeah. Okay. And probably some other stuff. I don't know yeah. what else. But Extra. I wanted to give some stuff to everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, we got the shout-outs and... We got the uh, I forget what else is at the dollar tier. Maybe that was maybe it was just a shout out. Yeah, I forget. But Another it's ex- it's the exciting. phone number. The phone number maybe. Yeah, that might be at five. I forget, guys. How do we run Patreon? But what it's a- it's not only about Patreon. No, it's not. It's about you guys. Yes. And well, what better way to talk about you guys? Yeah. Than in reflections. I can't think of one. Let's go. Please, please, uh, a moment to reflect. Uh, uh. You said you have a reflection. I do. Should I start, though? Uh, yeah, because it's your thing. I'm just riding on the coattails. Why is it my thing? Yo, I missed an audio call three hours ago. An audio call? From your mother. My mom? No. Oh, it no. would have made sense. I'm ready. She's also your mom. Yeah. No audio call. Purple Mohawk, our good friend, yeah. sent us an Instagram message the other day, mm-hmm. which is something you guys can do, too, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outlining that now it is possible... In this ever-evolving world of ours. Every revolving world of ours. Ever-evolving. Oh, okay. Sounds like you said every revolving. I felt like I got it out. Yeah, you did. It's me. It is now possible for us to mm. purchase a full-sized Megan doll. Oh. And my question is... Yeah? Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> now, okay. And that's it. Uh, I'm wondering why. Now, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't? I haven't. Okay. But I know enough. People really like that movie for some reason. Yeah, it seems to really be a part of the uh, the zeitgeist yeah. now, if I'm using that word correctly. It is. Uh, it's it's weird. Mm-hmm. It's a weird movie. Life-size Megan doll. Um, fully posable life-size replica of the Model 3. Oh, that's what her name stands for. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of a good reason because... The movie, like, knowing what the movie's about, about her, like, coming to life and being crazy and stuff, I don't want a real-life version of that, even if it doesn't come to life. But I have seen a lot of, um, I feel like the closest thing, I've seen a lot of really impressive rooms and studio setups that are basically, like, horror museums, Mm -hmm. and most of it is pretty cool. I think the scariest ones, I mean, it's all cool, Yeah. but I think the scariest additions to those setups are, like... Chucky dolls. Yeah. Where like that is that is the same thing. That's the thing that could come to life and kill you. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you have a life size xenomorph or thing. predator. No. Those, They're cool. Right. But the Chucky doll started as an inanimate object and you're already there. Yeah. So Megan's even scarier, especially because I feel like, oh, it is NECA. It's probably awesome, Ooh. actually. It doesn't the hair looks weird. The hair does look a little Oh, is it is it like real hair like hair though? Oh. <sighs> That's spooky. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you would just use it for display purposes, cause like yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, I wouldn't like people want to would want to get it and like kiss it. Life size. Oh no. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. You think so? I hope not. Probably someone though, huh? Yeah, probably someone. Ew. Yeah, I know. Ew. That's why I don't want people to have it. Ew. Ew. Yeah, we're we're. <sighs> Fred's upset. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> uh, Ugh. Let's see. What's our Let's see. Our organization is PAMDA. PAMDA? Podcasters Against Megan Dolls. (laughs) All right. (laughs) PAMDA. I'm not against the doll. I'm just, I'm against the person you implied exists. (laughs) The freak. I'm not into that. Not at all. So, yeah, I don't want it. 
I don't want anybody to have it. I don't it. want it. I don't want to know about it. No. Purple, don't you ever send this to me again. I'm just kidding. Thank you for sending it. Wow. Now it's been immortalized in the Keep Up Podcast history oh. on episode number 283 of the Keep Up Podcast. It's here forever. Thanks, Purple, for making this conversation happen. It's here forever. Uh, <laughs> I have a reflection. Wow. Uh, and by a reflection, I mean a message I received earlier today. Mm. Uh, this is from uh, Jesse's Floating Castle. What's up, Jesse? Hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Uh, she said... <laughs> I just had a random dream about you, which initially I'm like, me? Oh, really? Uh, (laughs) Go on. Just who's dreaming about me? Uh, And then she said, I dreamed you and Brett called me live during your podcast and told me you were doing a segment called Ridiculous Request, and it was my turn to request something ridiculous. Like, it could be to eat something, play something, or do something, and I just sat there dumbfounded, like, I don't know. And I I responded, and I said, that 100% sounds like something we would do. Yes, it does. Also, I bet if I told Brett this, he would want to do this as a segment. I immediately am (laughs) like, you can, (laughs) if you're watching the video, you can tap, double tap back to the moment where my face said, is this a new segment? Is that a genius? Right I, I knew immediately reading it. I'm like, Brett is going to want to do Why this. Why me? You don't want that? That's the coolest idea for a I segment. Think logistically, it's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it I is. Mean, You're right. not a nightmare. Right. You just have to schedule. You have to let the person know ahead of time. Well, no. I, I think it's like we pick a person, mm-hmm. and if they don't pick up. Yeah. Then it's that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the segment. That's it. That's the segment. But <laughs> that you're could right. be a fun if, thing to involve with Patreon. We call a random true. Patreon subscriber during the podcast. Oh, that would be and cool. And be like, hey. But the the problem with that is if they suggest something, mm-hmm. how the heck are we gonna do? Like, yeah. what if they suggest like go play Mortal Kombat? Like, do we stop the podcast and go do it? That's a good point. It's a. I think it's a good idea during like a live stream or something. Yes, it is. If we're doing like a like a twelve hour podcast or something like that. Ridiculous you know? request. Yeah. I do like that. It's a fun concept. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe could we do a whole stream called Ridiculous Request? Like And have people like Like the Keep Up Presents Ridiculous Request. Yeah, that would that could And we could do anything on the stream. Right, right. Um Yeah, that could be done. Cause then if we have to like go on the road or something, we can just bring the stream on the road on our phones. Oh if we had to like if they said like go to McDonald's and get something, like you could bring the stream with you. Yeah, and we could have like chat vote. Like if someone if someone suggests something or requests something that yeah. we have to do that would like require us to leave, yeah, then we could have chat vote. Like, if you want us to do this, is it going to be like the rest of the stream? Mm-hmm. I like that idea. <laughs> we got to workshop it a little, but yeah, Jesse, that's why I responded that way because I knew Brett would be into it, and He's I thought not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong. That's cool. Uh, and she responded uh, after that and said. If you do it, I will feel like a magical genie that can tell the future. Yeah. That could be a dangerous segment, though. That's <laughs> what she said. <laughs> she is not wrong She's not about wrong. that. So, no. Jesse, if you're listening now, I you're... hope it was okay that I read that out loud. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do think you're a magical genie. I, I mean, that's a that's a that's a future dreamer, right? What there. about being if you're a if you're a, a genie and you're not magical, you just a guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. Cause how else? A genie's only a genie when they can do the wishes. Or you just you just have the like coming out of a lamp situation. That seems like a useless That's thing. It's a bummer, dude. Although you could live in a lot of things. That's or is true. it only the lamp? Can you like shrink? If it's a power, then you're I'd it'd still be weird. Like if I met you and you're yeah. like, I'm a genie. And I'm like, oh, like you do magic, like you grant wishes. And yeah. you're like, no, no magic. No. I can just shrink <laughs> like well, all right that's kind of magic that's yeah. weird but but if you're just like no i can't i can't do anything no. different than you can then why am i a genie right yeah i mean i i guess that applies to like our commanders still commanders when they retire from the army like is a genie a title as opposed right to like, is it like uh, the president you're always the president after, right or you're always addressed as uh mr president yeah when you're not president aren't I'll- you I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume if yeah. I met a president who wasn't a president, I'd probably still say Mr. President. Yeah, I think you maintain the title. America. Yeah, <laughs> America. Uh, so a genie would maintain the title. I always, I only think of blue, bald-headed beings when I think of genies. They're not bald. Isn't... They got the little one... Oh, you're right, you're thing. right, you're right. <laughs> one tiny ponytail. Robin Williams' genie is like... That is the genie. The genie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I always see them with their arms crossed. Yeah, that's when Jafar becomes a genie. He, he was a big arm I crosser. bet you four 
Schminkles. Schminkles. That uh, that genie crosses his arms. You're probably point. right. Also, he's just called genie, huh? Yeah, that's funny. And he gets freed from the lamp. Spoilers. And he's still <laughs> genie after the fact, isn't he? Yeah, he's still president genie. Does he still have powers? He he does because then the show happens. Yeah, he puts on a shirt without actually having one near him. That's magical. He puts on a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, yeah. And he puts on a goofy hat. Yeah. Because he's going to Disneyland. Jesse, don't act like you can't magically put on a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I know you can do that. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, that's all I had in Reflections. We sure have reflected here today in Reflections. We have. I think it's time for television. Brett just spent like 10 minutes trying to stop the audio. I stop it, I dude. hope you leave it in the video, it but if relentless. not... relentless. Pro- I probably will. Just us sitting probably. there like, <gasps> silent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yo, welcome to television. Here we are. Uh, I have been on a kick of trying to catch up on old shows. Oh. Because uh, we're the keep up. That's you, all we ever do. That's true. You said very recently that you're bad at watching TV, though. I am. And that's why I'm trying to rectify that. Uh. So while I'm uh, running on my little bike to make sure I'm not super fat... Uh, a little exercise bike. Oh, dude, I thought you were <laughs> making up some kind of metaphor. I didn't know what was going on. Exercise bike. That's That was the end of gotcha. that thought. It's a yeah. stationary bike. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And so I'll watch a show as, right. I, as I'm doing it because it's, it's a good way for me to get myself into watching shows and also attempt to be healthier. It's a great way. I heard a hack one time. Yes. I can't remember the content creator's name, so I'm sorry I can't give credit, but in case it's helpful to anyone out there. Sorry, Bethany. A good way, could have been her name, yeah. a good way to motivate yourself to work out mm-hmm. is designate that show to only be watchable when you're working out. The workout show. Yeah. Yep. That's smart. Uh-huh. Is that what you were doing? That was what I was doing. Let's but go. But then here. I also just watched four episodes yeah. <laughs> the same night after. So it's not what you're doing. So, But it was the intention. Right. And it currently is with the, another show I'll talk about. But, okay. Uh, first show I'm going to talk about, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Oh, my gosh. Which where's, where's he going, dude? Have you you've seen the Scott Pilgrim movie? I have, yeah. Have you read the book or anything like not, that? Me neither. No. Um, but I have been, a, I would say, a pretty good, big, super smelly, stinky fan. Interesting. Uh, that's all the adjectives I use to describe my fandom. Because mm-hmm. uh, I've seen the movie <laughs> and I played the game, and that is my exposure to yeah. Scott Pilgrim. Uh, and the game does a great job of uh, doing re- recollecting the story in a video game format. It also does a great job of having developers who later made an awesome Ninja Turtles game. That's true. Loosely related. Yeah, loosely, but that's still related. Loose leaf related. Loose leaf paper. Yeah. Uh, but this show, uh, a lot of people going into it expected it to just be another another Scott Pilgrim a story. A retelling. A retelling, if you will. Um, will. This show... It's absolutely not a retelling. Really? It is its own beast. Oh. Um, which I think is very cool. That is cool. Because Scott Pilgrim has been retold in many different ways, uh, in book, in video game, in movies. Is the game essentially the story you know already? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Because you go and fight the evil ex-boyfriends, yeah. and uh, it's it's the same story. So the, the show huh. is definitely a love letter to fans. Because it it does not hit on any of the points the original show does or a movie slash book does. Yeah. Um, which is very jarring at first because I'm like, wait, what's what are they doing here? What's going on here? Yeah. Um, so it definitely still has the like fun video game charm and references and things. Okay. But it's certainly more down to earth than I would say the original movie was. Interesting. Um, because it, it's uh it's a, you follow a different character. Scott Pilgrim's still in it and stuff, but there's other things going on that. He's not the focus of this story for bold now. Bold move. Uh, bold move, right? And so it, it's fun because it really takes all the characters you know and all the things you might enjoy about the movie and puts them in a new perspective mm. and then wraps the show around everything that's new and different. Yeah. Um, as opposed to just it being a simple retelling. That is really cool. It seems like a almost a risky move having it be more grounded because I feel mm-hmm. like part of Scott Pilgrim's appeal is how out of control it gets. Yeah. And um, don't get me wrong, it gets out of control. It does get there. For sure. There yeah. are there's so many segments like that, but it does still feel very um 
like like the pacing of the movie and the games is just like you're just like battle after battle yeah. after crazy things happening. And the show definitely still has it, but the overall story is pretty pretty chill yeah. comparatively up until like near the end. Then it starts getting crazy. But. I'm glad to hear it's a different story because admittedly I have it added to my queue, mm-hmm. but I haven't jump to it. I was like, I'm sure I'm going to love this, yep. but I know the story. Right. So, so I didn't like, jump to it. What's the incentive to watch a story? Sure, it's animated and it's probably a yeah. cool way to watch it. But yeah, knowing that it is uh, complete, they do a complete swap on you. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's a keeper. That's a keeper for sure. And they brought back all the original voice actor or the people who acted the actors, in the movie yeah, as yeah. voice actors. I, they all sound good to me. Yeah, maybe like one or two stiff like deliveries. Okay, of certain characters, but yeah, everybody's back who was in the movie. So I think that's we talked about that briefly when we watched. Um, what's the animated Marvel show? What if? What if? Yeah, how some of the actors do not translate as well as a voice actor, nope. which is so weird. Right, because you're just still like delivering your lines, but I guess maybe being in oh, motion yeah. and stuff. It's got to like, be a different movie, yeah. Yeah, a different feeling, but mm-hmm. that's cool. That's good to know, and that does make me want to watch it sooner. Yes. Because, uh, like I said, I was already like, this probably rules, yeah. but um, really cool for fans, too, because, like you said, that story's been told three, four times. Mm-hmm. In the same way. I bet the book's a very different experience. I bet so, too. Because it's, it's longer, right? Uh, I think it's six six graphic novels or mangas. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, actually, how it was. I think there were graphic I novels. I think you're right, right about uh, the number. I think it was six. Being six, yeah. And the, the series is short. It's eight episodes. Um, I would say it left me wanting more by the yeah. end of it. I, I was like, <laughs> where's the rest? Because uh, it didn't feel like it was incomplete. I just wanted... More. You just I just, wanted, I more, just yeah. wanted more. So, and that's not a bad thing. No, um, that's true. You know, they definitely could have a season two. Um, no news if, of that yet. Uh, not that I know of. Mm. Um, but yeah, Did highly. You just skip twice. <laughs> You're like, no, not that I didn't know. <laughs> not that. That's amazing. I, I was, I was glitching. But yeah, definitely a keeper. Um, go watch it and enjoy the action. Brett's, Brett's doing that. Action's good. Yeah. Sorry, the tablecloth was distracting me. Yeah, no, it's okay. Here, it's better now. <sighs> And you know what else is better? What? Invincible. Invincible. I've still not watched or read Invincible. I'm going to be sick. I should just watch it, right? You should. Like, honestly, yeah. Yeah, I should just watch it. You should just drop everything else you plan on watching and watch it. It is like... Yeah. I was going to read it, because I mm-hmm. love Kirkman, and yep. I, I love reading the source material first, but mm-hmm. it being animated, and I feel like it's probably pretty close to like beat for beat. I'm sure you get extra in the comics. But... Yeah, that's what I've heard, and I, the episodes are, are chunky. I mean, like I feel like they're not skipping things, because the episodes are like 40 minutes to 50 minutes. Are they? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And I've only heard that it's amazing, so oh, I should just watch it. It's yeah, it's the next level. All it right. is. It is like, and you got to watch the boys. Too. I know I do. That one's. <sighs> I know. Uh, but Dude, yeah, don't on... say it's soof. It's soof. That one's soof. <laughs> Not much to say on Invincible, uh, <laughs> other than uh, there is season two just finished, um, and I just started the beginning of season two. And that first episode is such a freaking roller coaster. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. They okay. take you to so many things, and that's after coming off the heels of the first season, which I that set the bar so high yeah. that I'm like I'm nervous to watch season two yeah, because yeah, yeah. the expectations that first season set up was just off the wall. Yeah, from the animation to the to the uh, to the fighting to the voice acting, it's just like that's scary when you have such a good first season. Yeah. yeah, when it's when it's that superb, it's wild. But we do have the comfort of knowing that the book is great. Yes, long running, yep. beloved, got a good story. And so it's like, yeah, yeah, you know. So I think, and from what I've heard, season two knocks it out of the park again. Cool. Um, they also do have a little prequel story of a character uh, named Adam Eve in it. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a clip of that and it looked unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it makes me want just a show for that character. Really? Yeah. Cause and she's pretty prominent in the show. It's mm-hmm. not like she isn't. Um, but it's her origin. But wait, is this not a show just for her? No, it's just a it's like a prequel like movie, but uh oh. it's it's it was a way to like satisfy fans in the meantime while they worked on season two. I see. So uh, just like an episode basically? Yeah, essentially. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Um but it's it's all it's all uh its own contained story. Okay, that's cool. Um but yeah, that was incredible too. That was uh that again makes me just want to see that character in her own show yeah. and do her own thing. That's rad. Her moveset's really cool too. She's essentially like Green Lantern. Oh. But uh, she creates things out of like thin air and, and um, 
doesn't need a ring, <laughs> essentially. Oh, wow. <laughs> but um, she, it's uh, like, <clears throat> her name, Adam Eve. She can like uh, c- control uh, molecules and atoms and things like that. And Damn, that's so smart. It's so smart because the things she creates in battle, it really is like infinite possibilities as an anime. Yeah, that's like Green Lantern's only Achilles is that he needs the ring. Right. So Kirkman was like, let's just... <laughs> Let's I'm, I'm assuming Kirkman <laughs> created this character, but yeah. it's like, let's just get rid of that part. <laughs> and just still do wow. the green light. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So her fight, there's there's one fight, there's a couple fights in it, but one fight in particular, uh, it goes on for like 15 minutes or something. It is just like, the animation is Dude, next level. I am like falling in love with animated action sequences <laughs> yeah. lately. I was just talking to a friend about um, some of the X-Men fight scenes. And oh, I, still, I, still good? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I know we talked about it briefly, but just... I thought, I keep thinking I've seen like the most amazing animated action scenes. And mm-hmm. then, like, I mean, even from Onimusha was yep. incredible. Oh, that had some really good ones. Um, just the first episode of X Men had so many. Mm-hmm. And then I saw a clip that you posted of this show yeah. or that episode. And I couldn't believe how good it looked. Oh. I was like, I need to watch. It's just the possibilities are endless. Yeah. You know, I think where animation is right now, just there's, there's a lot of tools and technology that mm-hmm. allows you to make such cool fluid animation yeah um that it's not just stuck to people you know creating the cells and the art and you know it's much easier nowadays yeah yeah to more make resources all, yeah i i kind of want to play a game that looks like that like like uh invincible or just invincible or the new x-men like that yeah. borderline anime style mm-hmm. but the, i bet you could find it it's for that sure. fluid and yeah. like just looks like an animated show mm-hmm. like i know there's stuff that's close but like i want it to just be that there are there's a game i played called tiny kin um which plays Tinykin. plays like a cartoon would move if that makes sense that does make sense um not the same animation style it's mm. it's 2d like kind of like cup, cuphead but not as uh you know don't say hop. hose <laughs> hop <head. Hop> <laughs> uh, but yeah the that that type of style there's games out there you'll i bet there is all right there's ones you can find and play and Carry enjoy on. um that's all i'd say is it's, it's invincible it's fantastic uh adam eve super keeper um the adam eve special yeah and then uh the episode one of all on prime right all on prime yep oh that's the one problem prime has commercials now dude everything yeah everything everything I, what were we watching the other day? Max has a commercial, but it's only at the beginning of... Like, it's for... Mm, I got a couple today. Did you? Yeah. I, I was... only got one at the beginning. Uh, yep. Like, when I when we watched our movie, when we go to movies. Yeah. Uh, I only got one at the beginning. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe it's because I did have to pause it a couple times and come back later. Maybe it, re- like, refreshes. Yeah. Because I've been... But yeah, Max is like... Dude, I just hate how it takes you out of it. Yeah. Especially if you're watching something like... Uh, Oh, on Prime, mm-hmm. me, Rach, and the kids have been watching uh, The Chosen. I don't know that. It's the like the gospel stories. The It started as an app, and it's... You haven't heard about that? No, I don't think so. No way. It's uh-huh. on like season four. It was all crowdfunded. And then for, I think for season four, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's out yet, they, rather than crowdfunding it, they brought it to theaters. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how they did it, if it was like a couple episodes or what. But they were like, let's just bring it to theaters and see if we can raise enough money. From like ticket sales? Yeah. And yeah. they did to do another season. That's weird. So, but it's like, yeah, I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. No. it it's like I said, it started I mean, as smart. an app, but it's like, it's all on Prime now. Mm-hmm. But like, we're watching, like, when you're watching something like that, mm-hmm. set in like biblical times. Yeah. <laughs> and then it cuts to like, I already know. It's like a time period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, and it's so much louder because yeah. everything's like, Chill, it, dude, dude, it's so funny and it's so frustrating because everything has ads now. Yeah. Everything. You can't, dude. it's like, I am actively finding other ways to watch movies, not on the apps because the ads. Yeah. And they're not even that crazy, but I feel like it's ridiculous that you're paying for this service yeah. and you're getting forced ads when for years we didn't have ads. That's the craziest thing is like, that was the whole draw. Cause I get like, it. Like cable, you have commercials. That's just part of it. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to get to that where it's part of it too. Cause you can pay for 
ad, no ads. Well, that's the thing that's frustrating is like, yeah, I know you've been paying it for this long. Yeah. It hasn't had ads, but mm-hmm. now pay more. Now pay more. Yeah. So it is very jarring and invincible too. I mean, it's it's uh, like the first episode was like 45 minutes or seven or whatever. And uh, I think I had like six ads throughout the whole thing. That's and like brutal. Some ranging from 15 seconds to as much as a minute and a half. And I'm like, oh. That's, I know, you see 90 seconds and you're yeah. like, I could die before the show comes <laughs> back. This is insane. But it, it really does, like even something like that, you're kind of, you're deep into a certain kind of animation and visuals. And yep. then all of a sudden you're cut to some stupid commercial I just, and the music's all off. And yeah. I'm like, how did I do this my whole life before <laughs> streaming? Like, what how kind do of people world? get immersed into movies? Well, uh, I think the other thing is they probably don't have good moments where the commercials cut in. Like, shows always have, like... That's right. They planned and the screen faded to black and things like that. That's 100% Shows, correct. it just feels jarring. Yep. Yeah, I was watching uh, Batman Returns the other day. Yeah. And it's just like... I. In the middle, it's like duh, 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 tied. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? No, don't sell me this right now. I hate it. You're right. That's a big part of uh, why it feels so intrusive. I didn't think about that mm-hmm. because there's no fade out. There's yep. no spot for it. Mm-hmm. It's wild, dude. Yeah, I don't like that. Nope. That sucks. So it's on Prime. Yeah. Can you even pay for Prime without commercials? I think you can. Okay. I think it's just an extra couple bucks or whatever, but... I've had a couple show up in a way that I'm like, oh, this feels a little nostalgic, actually. I kind what, of commercials? Feel, yeah, com- yeah, like, if it does fall, if I, someone, like, says something and they're like, oh, and then it's like, a commercial happens to pop up, yeah. or, or an ad, I guess we're not back to commercials yet, no. but... No, dude, if they did, like, 90s commercials, yeah. I would be all for it. I, they could interrupt everything. Give me the th- I'll even buy it, dude. Yeah. Bring back Surge and show me an ad, dude. I'll I order think that Surge right is now. back. Shut up. I think it is. Shut up. I think you can only get it at a restaurant, though. A restaurant? Yeah, like you can get it from the fountain. What restaurant? Um, Taco Bell. Oh. No. No. Surge was Surge. a... I think Surge was a Coke product. Surge soda. So, sounds like a Pepsi product, but I feel like it was a... It's got 51 caffeine amount. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> the information we were looking for. <laughs> uh, let's see. About Surge movement... Surge movement. Surge movement. Fan power community recognizes the return of Surge. I thought it came back. I feel like it did for like an hour. <laughs> it was just like, and we're yeah, back. Yeah, because I think that does sound familiar to me. Yeah, here it says it was discontinued in 2003. Uh, Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Huh, I thought it came back. I want Sobe to come back. You can buy Surge right here. Where? On gotoliquorstore.com. You have to buy it at a liquor store? <laughs> Wait, is this like a... I don't know. Maybe it's an alcoholic surge. No, it's not. It's literally just. Wait, how much is a sixteen ounce can? Is it a real um, website? Uh. Oh no! It says enter address to find availability. Ah, so probably. I'm entering your street address. No. Um, the other day I I learned of a snack that I knew was going to be discontinued, but I didn't know when it was gonna. And I used to. Love them and eat them all the time. It's the Quaker snack mix. Do you oh, ever have that? Oh, I remember it. Because I bought when I knew it was like, because they just, I, we couldn't find it in stores anywhere. So I went online and ordered a box of 40 of them. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, can you, you? You can get it? I guess there's like a can available <laughs> about 45 minutes from here. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the back of some 7 Eleven, like dusty. And they're like, we found it. They're like, we didn't even know this was here. <laughs> it's like, all right. Uh, but, anyways, the Quaker snacks. Long story short, they're not sold anymore. Yeah. And I'm sad because I wish I like stocked up on them. Oh, no, because now that they're gone, that's it. That's that. That's it. I just can't enjoy because <sighs> the things about it is it had this like soft cheddary cheese it like snack, yes. little like yeah, cracker. Yeah. And then they had these like uh, octagon shaped little mm. cheese things. Like it was just a really good snack mix. When was the last time you actually had it though? When I bought that box of like 40 little bags. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so that was probably uh, 2000, um, uh, 2021, I think. Oh, so not that long ago. Not too long ago. But when when it's it just hurts that it's gone. Well, remember when the, uh, the 3D Doritos came back and they just weren't the same? Yeah. Are those they, still back? I think so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. They just never be the same. Never be the same. <sighs> Sonic music. At least that was the same. Some things 
never change. No. Um, uh, that's it in TV. Movies? Yeah. Cool. Ooh, ooh, let's go to the movies. Here we are. Hi. What's up, dude? Oh, we're in movies. Yeah. So we got a movie to talk about. We do. We Is it just the one? Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, hold up. Dude, I've been in the craziest Batman mood lately. How many Batman have you watched? One and a half. Are you going to watch all the live action ones? I think so, yeah. Well, what happened was the other day, Rach saw a clip about... It was actually... Um, what's her name? Eyes. Anne Hathaway. Um, <laughs> eyes? <laughs> yeah, she has really big eyes. <laughs> okay. No? No, I mean, sure, but... It's not how I would remember her. How would you remember? Les Miserables. Le, oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say Catwoman, but she was... So, Rach saw a clip of her talking about uh, how inspired she was by Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman and Batman mm-hmm. Returns, which is so good, and uh, her like training mm-hmm. for Dark Knight Rises, which I, I don't think I've seen since it was out in theaters. I le- legitimately only seen it that one yeah, time. Yeah, is that weird? Yeah. Um, where I've, I've seen The Dark Knight maybe... A thousand times. Yeah, <laughs> like 172 Batman times. Begins I've even seen like multiple times. Yeah, I have too. Mm-hmm. I, I think that movie's a mess. I know we've talked about it a little bit, but I think it's not great. It's I think it's definitely higher up because of how good The Dark, Dark Knight, Knight is. is yeah. I think on either side, both of those movies are remembered more fondly because yeah. how good it is. But I still think Batman Begins is all right. It's, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. I just... The last few times I've watched it, it just felt like a bunch of scenes thrown together, which is weird because Nolan's such like a master of his craft. Yeah. But um, anyways, Rach saw that clip and she was like, this makes me want to watch the Nolan trilogy again. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I want to too. And the kids have never seen it. So that gives us an excuse to watch all three. Heck yeah. Um, and then I forget what happened recently. Maybe I just saw him on Max or something or something happened. And I was like, I haven't consumed any Batman in a long time. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I I watched the first one the other night, uh, the Tim Burton one, and it's so great. And Nicholson's Joker is like just something so unique. And to think that it hadn't really done been done, other than there might have been some serials in the Adam West, uh, the Adam West TV show. Yeah, but other than that, I don't think Batman had been on screen. Mm-hmm. So just the way that they, the way that they portrayed both Batman and the Joker in that feels like. What's so cool about the movie is it feels like you've been watching them in that way. Like, yeah. the, you know, just you all of a sudden are seeing Bruce Wayne. You all of a sudden are seeing what Batman is like. Uh, yeah. There's, there's and, no, and, like, origin, really. No. It's just like you're, you're just in it. You're in Gotham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Keaton is so believable. Mm-hmm. And, and Nicholson's Joker is so unique. And even though we've had so many iterations since that have been incredible, Mm -hmm. that one still holds up on its own. And it's It's, so fun and wacky for like how what you would assume would be like how easy it is to do Joker. And like you just have a guy that's crazy and laughs a lot. Yeah. We have so many different Jokers in cinema and comics and everything. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, have you seen the new Joker trailer? Oh, I didn't see the trailer yet. I saw a still from it. Yeah. I can't wait. It's good. That's the other thing. I can't wait to watch that again. I've mm-hmm. only ever seen that once. Yeah. That's one that is still like pretty fresh in my mind. Yeah. That like I could see it again, but I don't feel like I need to just yet. Yeah. But um, yeah, the trailer for the, the new movie. It's good. Yeah. there. It's weird because it's like it's supposed to be a musical. I don't think there's any singing in it at all. I thought the whole trailer was singing, no? Not that I could tell. There was just a lot of like... Oh. Talking and there's a little bit of singing near the end, but at least oh. in the first part, there's not much. Maybe I misread a headline because that's all I know about it too. Is it supposed to be a musical? Yeah, and... yeah, but no, the trailer itself. There's, I mean, there's like music playing and stuff, but mm-hmm. they're talking and. Do yeah. we have a release date? If there was one, I didn't see it. Interesting, interesting. Remember, but hmm. mm-hmm. uh, quick bit of movie news that I found out about today. Yeah, uh, Blumhouse uh-huh. just announced that they are doing a series of. Uh, reimaginings of what are now considered classic horror movies, the first of which is a new The Blair Witch Project. Oh, my God. Very interesting. Yeah. So there's a part of me that's excited because I love The Blair Witch Project, Mm -hmm. and uh, Blumhouse is working with, I forget his name, but the producer of the 2016 Blair Witch. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great. But it literally said in the announcement, like, this is the first of a list of movies that will be reimagined. And Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so we're just going to see a bunch of other remakes. And now we're into remakes from our generation. Yeah. 
like that we saw as kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I mean, I guess I'm sure that's been happening, but this feels like a very deliberate, like a list of movies that are considered classic. And if that's considered classic, yeah, that's what, 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm like, what else are we going to see? That's going to feel like we just saw it recently. Right. You know I mean? Right. Like, where we don't like, we don't need it reimagined because yeah. those other movies are still like, yeah, like the Blair Witch is one that I don't think we really need reimagined no. or to be revisited on. Yeah, I'm not always this guy, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of like leave this one alone. Yeah, like, well, it just makes you think like how unoriginal a lot of things is. Nothing out of. sacred. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> leave it alone. Now, what if they remade Underworld? Oof. Would you be there for that or? I. Mm, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't even like when Scott Speedman stopped being like as prevalent in them. Yep. I don't know if I could. Uh, they could do it well. Yeah. I don't want one without Kate Beckinsale. That's, That's what true. I'm trying to get to. Yeah, I don't yeah. want that. But that being said, there are a lot of incredible leading ladies out there right now mm -hmm. that like maybe it would be cool to see someone take on Celine or, or be like her, you know, a relative or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um a descendant. I don't know. I, I could be into something like that. A continuation. I don't know that I would want it to start over because those movies to me are still still really good. Right. They're like, not like really old. Especially the first three. Mm -hmm. Like they hold up to me. The yeah. effects in those movies I thought were incredible. There mm -hmm. were a lot of practical effects, which I think is why they hold up so well. Um, but I mean, that's a good example. Like, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what else, what else they picked up. Like, are they going to... What else came out? I mean, are we going to see The Ring? I wonder if we're going to see oh, The Ring remade. The Grudge. The Grudge. I, they uh, already kind of tried. God, that was awful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. That was one of your most scathing reviews. God, that movie was just so bad. <laughs> yeah, the way you described that, I was like, I don't even want to hear about this movie again. No, no. Um, was that worse than Madam Web? <laughs> I was going to ask, because your review, uh, they're probably equally scathing. Yeah. But you hated The Grudge. The thing with The Grudge is I wanted it to be good because yeah. it is still to this day one of the scariest movies ever sure, to me. Sure. And, I, and, I, and I really just love everything behind it. So, um, yeah, to have a remake and it hurt so much or a that, re release. That makes it sting. That's how uh, Legend of Chun Li was for me. Oh, yeah. I wanted that to be good so bad that oh. it was, and it was all right. I mean, that movie sucked. <laughs> it was so awful. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, that oh the last point I was gonna make about Batman yeah. speaking of so awful <laughs> is I'm excited to watch uh, Forever and Batman and Robin I and reassess many years later yeah Batman and Robin is one I still haven't I must have seen as a kid but I do not remember a thing I'm pretty about sure it. it had the nipple suits bat nipples that's yeah. all I know yeah but yeah Batman Forever I think that one's still all right I think that I really think it's a progression yeah I mean. It gets weird and wacky, and, yeah, and very campy, and it's very campy, yeah. right? And I'm kind of excited to revisit that. It could, yeah, it's it's been be a while fun. since I've seen Forever, but yeah, dude, I loved when when Batman and Robin came out. I was at I was the target age <laughs> where like I wanted them all to look like action figures, yeah, and they legit look like action figures <laughs> in the movie. It's crazy. Oh man, um, but yeah, so so that'll be funny, mm -hmm. um, and I'll definitely report back when I watch those. Yes. What else? Well, we got a suggestion. Yeah, we did. We got a suggestion, and, you know, we always try to watch what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's already having a hard time. I'm already. I'm struggling. Well, I do love all the recommendations and all of the messages we've been getting everything. It's very, very cool. I'm still convinced you guys recommend movies so we can just suffer. I, that's there been, has been a lot of that. Been our, There's been a lot of that's it. It's been our exposure to, be honest, yeah. to the community out there. <laughs> so to continue our trend of, I wouldn't say suffering. No, but I wouldn't say so. I but say of, so. of films that took us on a journey we weren't ready for. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's the trend here. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, Sarah. Long Sarah. Time, long time friend. Long time friend and listener. Long, yeah, listener. Uh, she recommended a movie mm -hmm. called Time Bandits. Time Bandits. And man, was I intrigued because I think the way she described it, well, it was very accurate. Yeah. It's about uh, a group of dwarves mm -hmm. time traveling to steal things. Yes. And different points of history. Yeah. In different area codes. Area codes. You know who that is? Um, Beastie Boys. <sighs> Sure isn't. Dang. Yeah. Um, it's ludicrous. Um, 
So, yes. We watched it. We watched when it. When did you watch it? Yesterday? Uh, day before. What? Yeah, I'm fresh, bro. I watched yeah, I know. it today. You're more fresh than me. So talk yeah. about it, Brett. No, you go first. This movie was made in 1981. 1981, and it does revolve around a young boy, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. No who, relation to Home Alone Kevin. Right, not McAllister. No. That we know of. I don't know that we get a last name. Uh-uh. And the boy loves history. Yes. And his parents suck. <laughs> really and bad. And they don't really care about him or pay attention to him. His nope. dad's super into sending him to bed. Yeah. And his mom's super into appliances. Yeah, that's all you get. That's pretty much it. And then uh, he goes to bed. And a knight on a horse smashes through his closet. Yes. Jumps over his bed. Mm-hmm. And then he wakes up. And then he goes to bed. And at some point, a group of dwarves crash into his room and kind of try to murder him. Yeah. Well, first they're scared of him. And then they try to murder and him. And then they try to murder him. And uh, and from here, yeah. a wild adventure starts. Full of whimsical antics mm-hmm. and some shocking things. Dude. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there were some moments where I was like, what? Where? What are we? So the thing about this movie is, from my understanding, it was promoted as a children's movie. Sure. It is one that like you put it in front of your kids and you're like, ha ha, funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching it, it does not feel like a children's movie. It, it does to me. To the, me, it plays like a, it feels like a stage play mixed with a cartoon to me. Okay. I that's, can see that. That's kind of how it felt. A lot of that had to do with soundtrack. Yes. Which is something I was going to bring up is mm-hmm. the way this soundtrack is laid out is like, it's part of what makes it feel so cartoony. Yeah. Um, but carry on. Uh, my point was uh, basically the there are scenes in this that feel very mature and the comedy is, I think... Pushed in a way that feels very Monty Python, which yeah, I believe the director was the writer for Monty Python. Yeah, uh, Terry Gilliam, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the connections are there that feel very like you get some just You're like right. dry yeah. British humor and a mm-hmm. bunch of jokes that as a kid I think you would not get because they're like verbal jokes. But then you get a lot of like slapstick and like yes. goofy craziness that I That's think will a make great point. Will make kids enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, I think the 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 um, lines and things delivered in a way felt very much more like mature humor, yeah, and like dry British adult humor. <laughs> it's it's funny that you mention that because those were the moments that were the funniest to me. Mm-hmm. Whereas the sort of slapstick, cartoony humor didn't land quite as much. But I could see, yeah, you're right. That kind of explains some of how I felt about the tone throughout it. Yeah, it felt a little up and down. It is insanely whimsical. Mm-hmm. Um, that is that word was going through my head. That's the that is the, the whole word. movie. It's got every like f- like fantasy trope you could kind of think of. And yep. in that right, I thought it was really cool because what's happening is these uh, these dwarves want to be thieves. They've stolen a map from the supreme being mm-hmm. um, to. Uh, the universe, basically, and they're using these. This was actually my favorite part of the movie is mm-hmm. the way that they explain how they time travel. The explanation is that the um, the universe, how do they say it? There's a line that I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. There's like a bunch of holes in the universe. Yeah, the fabric of the universe is like um, an imperfect job or something like that. Yeah. So there's holes and the map shows where the holes are and mm-hmm. that's how you travel through time. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of cool to say that like there's tears in the fabric of the universe and that's how you go through time. But I was it's like, so like unpredictable. Like, right. They, they were... don't know where any of them lead to yeah. really. And yeah. they like show up at a certain time. Yes. Um, but is it only them that sees it? Like how many other people like accidentally step into a time portal and it's a great point. And also they have a map. So how come they never know where they're going? <laughs> 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 it just shows you where the portals are. Yeah. Um, but there are these like these very specific set pieces. There's mm-hmm. um the Napoleon uh the <laughs> Napoleon being so obsessed with height yes. and naming different rulers who were his or sm- shorter than his height. Yep. Um was pretty funny. There's a Robin Hood segment that was my favorite. Yeah. That was very English humor. Mm-hmm. That one and that that made me laugh out loud a couple times. Just the the actor who played Robin Hood, his delivery was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and the villain is I thought I thought that, was, that feels like a cartoon. Yes, the villain. yeah, very cartoony. But some of the f- some of the funnier stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but also there were some moments where I was like, this, this is just cartoon humor. Yeah. Which is, is fine, but it's very much feels like 
This is you totally nailed why I had a hard time because I was gonna say like it plays like an '80s kids movie, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't all the time. Mm -hmm. There are moments where it definitely feels more mature. Um, but yeah, there's giants, there's, uh, demons on pirate ships, yeah. there's, uh, what else am I missing? Uh, the centurions, like the, centurions. the ancient Greece, yep. like, um, astronauts. I mean, there's like, there's everything. You yeah. hit like all forms of, uh, fantasy and sci-fi and just yes. history, really. Yeah. And, uh, oh man, the overt use of dummies in the 80s. Oh, my God. Bro, the dummies in this movie <laughs> got thrown <laughs> from so many ledges. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Every transition was like, ah, <laughs> like dummies just this falling and land. smashing on something. I, I can only assume that's intentional. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it feels, and and yeah, so it was uh, Terry, what did you say, Gil, Gilliman? Gilliam? Gil, Gilliam. I could be wrong. Yeah, but, no, I think you're right. Is, yeah. Um, So he wrote and directed Monty Python and is part of that whole Life of Brian, all those type of movies. Got Gotcha, okay. Um, so very much that style, just again, more, I would say more like chill, more chill for children mm -hmm. um, to a point. Again, sometimes there's extreme jokes where you're like, okay, that yeah. just happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, um, I there were some points in the movie that very much I was like almost falling asleep to. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it was just like they kept going and going and I'm like, okay, just like get us to the next area. It is two hours. Yeah. And I don't think that it needs to be. No, I feel yeah. like it's a little too long for its own good. Because that pacing even, I mean, if it if the goal is for it to be like a kid's movie. Yeah. Um, you got to cut that down a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, but not to the point where I where I disliked it. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> The ending... Um, <laughs> dude, I, I don't know if I hate it, if I'm just like, what the hell? So or... I laughed out loud yes. at the ending because I could not believe the credits were rolling. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to say it out loud, but I also don't want to, Sarah, I know, I imagine, you know yeah. what we're talking about. I say it's better not to know Yeah, as much as it is a like warning. If you see this movie, be prepared. This ending is crazy. Yeah. Um, just a wild decision yeah, to make, but I, it's not like crazy enough to warrant the whole movie i don't think like to justify watching a movie just to see this ending no I no i but i would say mm -hmm. um i would say it's it would be a fun watch with some friends if you if you like the 80s like mm -hmm. think of you know if you if you like like 80s fantasy i think it's a it's kind of a fun watch yeah, I don't think I'm ever running to watch it again. But, no, I don't think I will. But I don't think it's it's like it's a sleeper in any way. Yeah, I don't think it's a sleeper, but I think it is a specific like there were mo like I think we would have had fun watching it together. Mm -hmm. uh, the ending is wild. It's it fe it it felt like a stage play to me. Like yeah. everything about like the sets, the the props, the mm -hmm. costumes, and that's kind of how I was thinking while I was watching it. Um, yeah, the comedic tone, I wish it was more consistently that sort of more mature British humor, mm -hmm. but I do feel like it was meant to be more of a, a family movie. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't feel like a, a like a children's movie. No. So I guess maybe family movie is, is the word. Mm -hmm. um, also, why does every little kid in 80s movies like this just sound like a boiling kettle. Like, I just feel like every kid is like, no, don't go that way. No, no, you're mad. You're mad. He really don't do that. No, not to Napoleon. Like, Please. they all sound like Muppet parodies. And for what reason is he trying to stop? Know. Like, <laughs> there's some sad parts in the movie, too. Yeah, there are. Like, there like are. there's, yeah. And Bro, they were just... They're killing people and blowing up dogs yeah. and like there is some. This poor madness. kid gets dragged across time and space. Anytime he finds happiness, the doors are like, "Come with us." That honestly, that's sad. Yeah, it's tragic. There, are, there are. Yeah, you're very right. There are moments where I'm like, "Are they going to do this to this kid?" Like, yeah, they scripted this and just went with They're it. They're just like, "All right, this poor kid." Yeah, he's really tortured throughout the whole movie. Yeah, and he's supposed to be having fun. But I don't feel like he is. And that's the other thing that's funny about it is it's like he so the the dwarves want to be thieves and yeah. he, all his historical heroes were the ones who helped the needy and all that. So he's like he wants to stop it. So the whole time he's like not where he wants to be. No, and he doesn't want to be with them. It's very it's in that right. The story is very interesting because it's like I wonder how kids 
would feel about watching that and be yeah. like, oh, this character is not on like a fun Goonies mission. No. <laughs> he was stolen by these <laughs> like thieves. Yeah. And uh, plus wh- the goals of the, the dwarves was to get money. Mm-hmm. And then what? Time travel and spend the money? So they just wanted to be rich. Yeah. And we got to see it a little bit. I guess, but... They, they, and that was the scene. Because that was actually good contrast. because they have six dwarf suits? So they probably had them made. But I mean, not where they were. Oh, you're saying in the movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking practically. I'm like, <laughs> they exist. I don't think dwarves would be on that boat. <laughs> That's a good point. So why do I have six of them ready? And I don't seven, know. including the Yeah, kid. where'd they get them? <laughs> Money or not, you yeah, can't just it's make just it. accessibility <laughs> is an issue here <laughs> at that time for sure. That's funny. Um, the other reason I would say it's worth uh, watching is the finale mm-hmm. and the effects. Yes, are a trip, dude. Oh my the, god, the um the carousel moment. Yes. <laughs> that was like it was like something out of Hellraiser. It was all over the it place. It was so wild. Yeah. Uh yeah, there were a lot of crazy things because this um I forget what it what is it was he just called evil? Yeah, I think so. He was just the evil or the wizard or I forget. Mob. But he's just basically the like the embodiment of evil and wants to rule the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the finale, kind of has powers to do whatever and does some really wacky things. And I thought that was uh, that was pretty wild to watch. Evil genius. That's what he's called? Yeah. Evil genius. Who who plays him? Uh, David Warner. I don't know if I should, but I felt like I I knew him. There's probably, there's a lot of people I like recognize in it, but don't know their names or anything. I've just seen them in various stuff. Oh, dude. Yeah, well, you know this guy. He looks very familiar. Yeah. But if you said name one movie he's in, Tron, Harold and Kumar. <laughs> oh, dude, he's in Teen Titans Go. Wow, Doctor Who. He's still alive. Eighties um... are a long time ago now, Brett. <laughs> oh, dang, he died two years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, at least he had fun. Rest in peace. <laughs> at least he had fun. So ultimately, Brett, keeper or sleeper. <sighs> Oh, he's just, he's thinking. Mm. When I... It's a novelty watch for me. Yeah. When I give something a sleeper, it's it's usually like, I don't want people to waste their time on it. And right. And I, I think there's enough here, even if it's not the, like, the best, mm-hmm. I think it's worth a watch for some of the crazy stuff that happens. Like, when it's weak, I think it's pretty weak. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I there, there are moments of it that I'm like, I just... I just don't like it for one reason or another. Yeah. But when it gets crazy and ridiculous, it's crazy enough where I'm like, might be worth the watch so you could tell, or at least talk to us about the ending in particular. But yeah, <laughs> I will say this, like Tim and I have already had multiple conversations about it before we recorded. Mm-hmm. So there is, there, there are definitely some things to discuss. I guess what I'm having a hard time with is I'm like, who, who watches it? Like, if um, I watched it, I wouldn't call you and be like, dude, go watch this movie right now. Yeah. I like, I couldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I would say for like history buffs or people who like Monty Python. I think it yeah. very much is that type of humor. Um, and any of those kind of. That's a good point. Yeah. If, get, any of those type of. If movies. you like, if you like that, that style of humor mm-hmm. and, and whimsical fantasy, mm-hmm. I think you'll, there's something here for you. It's. It's, it's a little uh, more niche, I would say. Like it is, and I I really think it's just because of the tone. If it yeah. was consistently as funny as that Robin Hood scene, even mm-hmm. I feel like I it would feel more even. But what keeps coming to my head when I'm thinking about uh, recommending it is like the moments where it does feel like a kids movie. Yeah, it's like that that felt like funny to me at times. Mm-hmm. But uh, but overall, I think it it is it's a pretty wild watch. But but I think the finale alone and all the effects. Is almost kind of like worth a watch. Yeah, like, it's just so funny. The dude, the carousel thing was crazy. It really is. That was wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think there's enough to talk about, and it's interesting. I'd say it's a keeper. Yeah, yeah, keeper. You, oh, you agree? Yeah, we agree. agree. Yeah. What are we gonna do now? Uh, you have, you got some things you want to hit. I one of these days we'll come back to video games. I swear. <laughs> Dude, the only the variable is Simmy's upstairs. What time is it right it's now? It's 8.45, and I live far away from here. It's up to you. You make the decision, man. <sighs> oh, I really want to talk about it now. 
It's up to you. All right, we got to go into books. Sarah, thank you for the recommendation. Yes, thank you. Let's go into books and comics. Have you read anything good lately? No comics, though. It's just a book. Lame. Wake me up when it's over. (laughs) All right, listen. I just finished this book, so it's fresh on my mind. I need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It is called The Last Action Heroes. The I forget the full title. It's a long one, dude. Don't. don't Is it a uh, biography? So it is a book about all of the action stars, Mm -hmm. basically that you can think of from like the golden age of action stars. Yeah. So the full title is "The Last Action Heroes: The Triumphs, Flops, and Feuds of Hollywood's Kings of Carnage" uh, by Nick Desemlian. That sounds sweet. So I saw it on a shelf at Barnes and Noble. Yes. uh, Months back, and. I had mentioned recently how if you have Spotify Premium, you can listen to a bunch of audiobooks now. Mm-hmm. This book is on there. It's new, too. It, it, the book did not come out long ago. Wow. And um, I, I got it on Audible, mm-hmm. so I just listened to it on there. But I just wanted to let everyone know, if you have Spotify Premium, you can listen to it on there. Sweet. I loved this book so much. Mm-hmm. It is basically every story from the inception of like 80s action madness Mm -hmm. all the way up through talking about like the expendables oh okay and like recent like jean-claude van damme's current career yeah is it specifically about him or all of them no it's about all of them Mm -hmm. and this is what makes it so crazy so uh covered in the book are sylvester stallone arnold schwarzenegger uh jean-claude van damme chuck norris jackie chan dolph lundgren uh who am i missing who am i missing I feel like there might be somebody else. Uh, Who could it be? Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis. Nice. That's the one. Yeah. Um, and what is so crazy about this book, so I'm a huge fan of that era of action movies. It's it's so wild, but mm-hmm. there's so many cool things about this. If you're not, of course you, you benefit in ways from being a fan of those movies. Um, wait, how did I want to say that sentence? Of course reading the book has some benefits for those who are already fans of those actors in those movies. Mm -hmm. But even if you're not, most people are aware of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, The way these actors all intertwined throughout their careers Mm -hmm. is absolutely insane. Like there are just so many crazy things in this about the way uh, like Jean-Claude Van Damme idolized Stallone Mm -hmm. and how uh, Jackie Chan tried to break in uh, in North America, like four times, was already massive mm-hmm. in uh, Asian cinema, and it, Rumble in the Bronx was like his fifth attempt o- attempt over here, mm-hmm. and just hearing about his whole journey was so insane, and how uh, film here felt so restricting to him because. In when he was filming anywhere in Asia, he basically was like, whatever idea we had, it was so cool. One of the uh, lines in the book that was a quote from him, um, loosely loosely uh, repeated here, was here, uh, we write the story and then try to figure out the action. He was like, in Asia, we discover the, or decide what the action is going to be first and then figure out how to do everything after. around it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. Kind of like Power Rangers. Where yeah, they yeah. had all the action and yeah. they made the story exactly. around it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it's it's very, very cool, too, because it discusses the decade, uh, like the 80s being so overtly violent mm-hmm. and in some cases so blatantly painting another country or a certain people group as villains mm-hmm. and like America as the hero because that's kind of where the country was at at mm-hmm. the time. And then how in the 90s, it was a very distinctive switch in what people were going to see. So some of the action movies that came out in the early 90s, even though like, um, I don't know, for example, like Rambo 2 uh, cr- absolutely crushed. Mm-hmm. And then the third one came out and it was like the body count was up. It was more violent, but like people weren't going to see it as much. And all of a sudden reviews started to come against all the violence and stuff like that. So there's a lot about the way the public responded to the movies, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but the intricacies of each actor's like journey to being who they are mm-hmm. is just like so wild. And they all intertwine with each other from being like stuntmen to each other, being rivals, um, being uh, like at meetings together. And, um, I'm trying to think there was another example that I was like, what are the odds of that even happening? But they all, they're all like 
related to one another conceptually. Yeah. Like you think of 80s action and right. all, all these movies come to mind, mm-hmm. but they also are all very much intertwined uh, in their lives. Yeah. Because coming up in that scene, like... Do they have like similar agents or something? Or Well, it's like scripts were going to like, oh, if Arnold doesn't want it, send it over to Stallone. Gotcha. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, but um, there are even moments in their in their careers where when Arnold did twins, like he decided he really wanted to do something a little more comedic Mm -hmm. and that really worked well. And then you read about Stallone doing this, uh, this other movie that was kind of similar paired him up with uh, one of the actresses from the golden girls Mm -hmm. and it just didn't really work. Yeah. And so all those stories are really interesting, but really it's about the personal lives. Like Arnold's father being essentially being a Nazi and like, his his really rough upbringing and they all are really admirable in the way that they just like pursued their dream mm-hmm. and it going all the way up through expendables where like even some of the actors who had like crazy feuds coming together it made me want to watch those movies again like yeah. immediately um and i just i can't recommend it enough i couldn't i it, couldn't stop you sold me on it and one of the things i love about it too is it's chronological. Mm-hmm. So it starts with like, uh, you know, one of the earliest stories is how Sylvester Stallone basically was living in a car, mm-hmm. wrote Rocky, and then that changed his entire life. And that was it. You know? Um, and he's always been a writer. Mm-hmm. He's he's always had like a softer artistic side. He paints and stuff like that. So there's a lot discussed about like them trying to maintain their image. Mm-hmm. And then a lot about like the turmoil of relationships and drug problems and all that's like all the Hollywood stuff. It's all in there Mm -hmm. and it's all like so fascinating. And uh, it being chronological is really cool because it puts in a perspective like, oh, these guys were already making these movies. And then Jean-Claude was over here, had Rambo posters and then like, broke his way into right. Hollywood over in America. And then they like were interacting with each other as, as, as time went on and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's so wild. And there, there's a lot of interviews um, and quotes from different producers, uh, different agents who worked mm-hmm. with them and all the actors themselves. And it's just a very, very good read. Like I said, if you're into those movies at all, I can't recommend it enough, but even if you're not, it's a very interesting read just to hear about how film kind of changed through that time, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to like action movies and things like that. Um, and I couldn't stop thinking about you with all the Jackie Chan stuff because yeah. they go deep into his history. Um, and then there are other like peripheral people that get brought up. Like Bruce Lee gets talked about a lot oh, I bet. Uh, because of his influence, Chuck mm-hmm. Norris uh, being in, was he in Enter the Dragon or Return of the Dragon? I think it was Enter the Dragon. Yeah, I think he was in Enter the Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Um, And Jackie Chan studied under him, I believe, as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Jackie Chan was also in a movie with Frank Sinatra. That's bizarre. That's crazy. (laughs) Don't do it. What? I thought you were going to fart. No, I wasn't going to. You were like... Let's Let's go! go. Didn't work, dude. Um, So is (laughs) is this a long book? Uh, Since you listened so to it, because I audio, listened to yeah. it, how I don't long know. was it audio wise? Um, it was eight hours. Okay, so I it's, believe I would say I'm going to take a guess. Yeah, do it. Take a guess. I'm going to say it was two hundred, no, three hundred and sixty pages. That sounds fair because it wasn't incredibly thick. What's it called again? The Last Action Heroes. The Last Action. Oh God. One of the craziest stories was about all the marketing around the Last Action Hero, mm-hmm. the Arnold movie, and I still got to see that. Never seen it. I don't know that I did either, but I remember as a kid like thinking I loved it, mm-hmm. which is what all that story is about. Is the marketing was insane, and the movie did not do well at all. Really? Yeah, because it's it's one that always comes up like when I'm looking up like not even best movies, just like iconic movies, Mm -hmm. like 80s and 90s action movies. It pops up a lot. Because it was supposed to be like an action movie about action movies, basically. And But do you think it's good or no? I don't don't think so. The the book didn't describe it as it is. Yo, I nailed it. 352 pages. What did you say? 360. No way. Yeah. That's actually insane. (laughs) Because usually if it's like 12 hours, it's, it's usually like... Um, closer to like 700 pages. Yeah. Um, just because I was used to it when I um, would listen to audiobooks myself. That's wild. <laughs> that is so wild. Mm-hmm. Um, that is all I got. Mm-hmm. I is it get... a keeper or sleeper? Oh, dude. 
Do not read this book. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Heavy Keeper. I literally almost wanted to listen to it again. Yeah. I was, like, so stoked on it, and uh, it made me... It made me have a different kind of appreciation for that era. Mm -hmm. I already have it for nostalgic reasons and uh, other other reasons. I just I just think it's crazy that those movies exist because mm -hmm. like we all know how over the top they are. Oh my god! And it's like they all knew too. And just hearing about what it was like then mm -hmm. on on sets, uh, you know, budgets just flying through the roof because they had crazy new ideas. Yeah. And then, you know, you get, like, a lot of uh, insight into being on set with James Cameron on, like, mm -hmm. Terminator and then what it was like doing Judgment Day. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. So cool. Heavy Keeper. Good to know. Because I want to listen and or read it. You should and or. I still want a hard copy of it, actually, because the cover is <sighs> super dope. 25 bucks. It's not that Amazon. bad. I might get it. But that might have been paperback. I don't know. I don't want that trash. Yeah, trash. All right, listen, bro. We got to get out of here. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for hanging out with us. This has been episode number 283 of the Keep Up Podcast. Um, if you would like to interact with us on all different platforms, then please do. We are at the Keep Up Podcast on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Yeah. You can message us wherever, mm -hmm. comment, whatever you want to do. If you're watching on YouTube, or even if you're not, you can like and subscribe. That is free for you to do and very helpful for us. And if you haven't and want to, you can leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts. Or wherever. Or wherever. Also yeah. wherever. Tim. Yes. Tell everybody where they can find you and your other work. You guys can find me at Collection Revolution on TikTok, on Twitch, on Instagram, on Twitter, on... There's a lot of T's. Twitch, that TikTok, Instagram. It's a silent T at the beginning of that. Right. Uh, you know, where you guys can find social medias, I'll probably be there. Uh -huh. Brett. What? Where can all the freaking people find your freaking face? <laughs> so aggressive, dude. <laughs> uh, you can find me at this drink I like it <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> um, and <laughs> there's a the water. There's a oh yeah, you don't. How you doing? Is your mouth dry? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, at this drink, I like it on Instagram. There's a link tree on there. That's my personal page. We can hang out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the link tree will get you to like my music and streaming stuff. And uh, what else is on there? My other podcasts. A lot going into this here podcast and the keep up content. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have a lot of music coming out soon. So if you want to find me on there, that would be rad. Yeah. Uh, Tim's going to do what's called End Babble. Babble. <laughs> where he talks nonsense for about a minute and a half. And uh, I guess that is it. You guys are the coolest. Everybody have a great week. Um, Tim, your theme is... Flying through time on a crispy French fry. Sweet. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Crispity crunchity of the flying fry. You can hear it sizzle in the sky as time warps around you. You look to your left and you see the history of the hickory smoked sausage as it begins to be hickory smoked in front of a group of young whippersnappers. And over to your right, you see the beginning of time. One man's butt farted so hard that the bang was big. And our universe was created. A weird angle indeed, but we saw it nonetheless. And as you look ahead, you see yourself as time is just a loop. And you see yourself traveling through time in front of you, forever looking beyond what one can do. And this fry is also your meal, so chew on it as you descend deeper into the madness of time traveling. And so I'll leave you with this. French fries will not help you time travel. Unless they're like mushroom fries or they're like poisonous, um, then you might start tripping and you might travel through time, but it won't be real. <laughs> <laughs>